Right now, a man found dead near a Madison grocery store. The ongoing investigation by police. Plus, former President Obama and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz come to Madison. What message they had for voters as early voting in Wisconsin starts. And there's a new outbreak of E. coli linked to the Golden Arches. What McDonald's and the federal government are doing to stop the spread. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 10. Madison police are investigating after a body is found at the Hy-Vee grocery store on Whitney Way. Police say the death was discovered around 3 this afternoon. The victim said to be a 50-year-old man, but his identity has not been released at this time. Officers say they do not believe the incident to be criminal or suspicious in nature. The investigation is ongoing. Two weeks from now, voters will head to the polls to decide who will get the job as the next president of the United States. That's why one of the few people who have done that job was in Madison today campaigning to get Kamala Harris and Tim Walz to the White House. Braden Ross joins us now with more. Braden. Hey, Rick. Yeah, that's right. Former President Barack Obama filled the Align Energy Center Coliseum alongside Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Walz this afternoon, making their case for why Wisconsin voters should make Vice President Kamala Harris the next Commander-in-Chief. Walz took the stage first, touching on issues from reproductive rights to the economy and poking fun at Trump for his recent appearance at a McDonald's. They found him an apron his size and put it on him. <laughs> And I was thinking, it is possible he mixed up his weekends and thought that it was Halloween already. <laughs> his agenda lets big corporations not pay people for overtime and diminishes those very workers that he was cosplaying as. He missed an opportunity, though. Being at McDonald's, he looks much more like Ronald McDonald than the clown that he actually is. Now, Obama was up next. He riled the crowd with several jabs for at former President Trump, but his main message, though, was don't boo, vote. I understand why folks are looking to shake things up. I, I, I get it. What I cannot understand is why anybody would think that Donald Trump will shake things up in a way that's good for you. He said January 6th was a day of love. You're, you're going to hear this from me. Do not boo. Vote. They can't hear you boo. They can hear your vote. Now, Obama and Walz were also joined at the rally by Congressman Mark Pocan and Senator Tammy Baldwin, Governor Tony Evers, and West Wing star Bradley Whitford. Walz also made a campaign stop in Racine tonight. Obama appeared at a rally in Michigan alongside rapper Eminem after stopping in Madison. Braden, thank you. Former President Trump's campaign reacting to Obama's visit. In a statement, Team Trump, Wisconsin said, quote, and while it'll probably be a slightly less unhinged affair than what other Kamala surrogates are doing to move the needle, an Obama visit isn't going to convince Wisconsinites to vote for another four years of open borders, rising prices, and disaster at home and abroad. Trump campaigned in Florida today, talking to Latino elected officials and business leaders about the economy. Back home here in Wisconsin, it is the first day of in-person early voting. We caught up with voters as they stood in line at the polls. The parking lot full and the line inside was long all day at the Fitchburg Community and Senior Center. Wisconsin is just the most recent state to kick off early voting nationwide. Other swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Georgia already have early voting underway. One voter we spoke to said he voted early to skip the even longer lines expected on election day didn't want to stand in line but i ended up standing in line anyway so if you were to have come on election day how much longer do you think that line would have been as opposed to the first day early voting probably two hours no well, it's important to keep in mind when you vote early in person you have to vote in your municipality it is beginning to feel a bit like fall again in southern wisconsin jacob out on the weather patty with more on these cooler temperatures in the days ahead jacob yeah, temperatures will continue to fall for tomorrow, but they're still going to be pretty much right at normal, but it's going to feel noticeably cooler. Now let's take a look at the current radar. We had some showers earlier, but right now we are pretty much completely dry in southern Wisconsin. Temperatures right around 60 for much of Dane County. A few areas in the county still in the middle 50s and a few areas uh, in southern Wisconsin actually already dropping into the upper 40s, 48 degrees in Lone Rock. So we are seeing those cooler temperatures is kind of already move into southern Wisconsin and overnight they're going to drop mostly into the 40s. Now compared to 24 hours ago it's not substantially cooler but the afternoon hours tomorrow will be over around 10 degrees cooler than uh, the given times today so it's going to feel a lot more like fall. Now it also will be windy not seeing that wind right now but the winds are going to pick up throughout the night. We'll see wind gusts up to around 30 miles per hour during the later overnight hours and the morning 
for your Wednesday. So that Wednesday morning commute may get a little breezy if you plan on, you know, walking your kids to school or anything. Just be aware of that. But the winds are going to calm down throughout the day. Now, as far as the forecast for tonight, we'll see lows dropping into the 50s and 40s. But overall, it is going to be much cooler for tomorrow night. I'll talk more in detail about the temperature drop and we have a good chance of rain coming up of those details a little bit later. Jacob, thank you. We now know the name of the man killed after a shooting in Sun Prairie. The Dane County Medical Exam Governor's office identified the victim as William Flannery of Brookfield. Late last Friday night, Sun Prairie officers were called to Martin and Elm Streets for a report of shots fired. There, officers found Flannery and another victim. Flannery was pronounced dead at the scene. Another person, the other person taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No arrests have been made. If you have any information about the shooting, you're asked to call the Sun Prairie Police Department or Madison Area Crime Stoppers. A Darlington man is dead after a weekend crash near Janesville. Saturday morning, Rock County deputies were called to North River Road at West Highway 14 for a crash involving a tractor. The driver of the car, Kevin Bahe, died at the scene. Deputies say Bahe was driving eastbound when he hit the westbound tractor. The tractor's driver did not require medical attention. It's Teen Driver Safety Week, and experts are providing tips to parents to keep their children safe. In 2022, more than 2,500 people were killed in crashes involving young drivers from 15 to 18 years old. Now, experts say teaching a teen to drive safely starts before they're even old enough to get a license. Parents need to set an example for their children. And once they're old enough to get behind the wheel, teens should practice as much as possible with parents sitting right next to them in the vehicle. Don't text and drive. Always buckle your seatbelt. Make sure that when you're driving, you are paying attention to the road and you're not participating in risky activities like speeding or tailgating. We also know that things like parent-teen driving contracts can make a huge difference in keeping teens safe. Those contracts are a way for parents to set rules and expectations for a licensed teenage driver, including night driving restrictions, restricting the number of passengers, prohibiting phones and devices while driving, and requiring seatbelt use, of course, at all times. There's another major food recall tied to potential listeria contamination. More than 600 frozen waffle products from over a dozen brands are being voluntarily recalled. Treehouse Food says the bacteria was detected through routine testing at a manufacturing facility. The products are sold at big retailers like Walmart, Target, and Publix. And this comes uh, amid several other listeria-related recalls, including Boar's Head Deli Meat, Bruce Packs Ready-to-Eat Meat, and poultry products as well. Well, we have more and more complicated uh, food supply chains. So at every step of food processing, there's the opportunity for contamination. So that's number mm. one. Okay. Uh, consumers want ready to eat food. So of course they're more processed as a yes. result. And thirdly, we have better tests. So it used to be we might not have been uh, aware or known what made you sick. Now we can actually test, detect, mm. and tell you what made you sick. Well, so far, there have been no confirmed reports of illnesses or deaths due to contaminated waffles. Symptoms include fever, muscle ache, fatigue, stiff neck, confusion, loss of balance. Consumers should throw away any recalled products or return them to the store for a refund. A new food safety alert tied to McDonald's quarter pounders. The CDC says the popular burgers are linked to an E. coli outbreak. Officials say tainted meat has, been, has sickened at least 49 people in 10 states. One person has died. A specific ingredient hasn't yet been identified, but CDC investigators are focusing on slivered onions and beef patties. Other beef products at McDonald's, including the cheeseburger, hamburger, Big Mac McDouble, and the double cheeseburger, are not impacted. This is a temporary change as the investigation continues, and we are working quickly to return our full menu in these states as soon as possible. Now, e. coli symptoms include severe stomach cramps, fever, and nausea. One in three Americans will get shingles in their lifetime, and in about 8% of those cases, the illness spreads to the eye. That can cause scarring and vision loss for some. But a new study out of New York is proposing to treat shingles with the, of the eye with an antiviral drug for a year rather than the usual 7 to 10 days. Results of the study show patients who took the treatment had an 18% risk of worsening eye disease over 18 months. Those not taking the treatment at a risk of 44%. Are you concerned that this did not reach statistical significance for the primary endpoint at 12 months, but it did at 18 months? I'm really not concerned about that. It can take a long time to kind of get those nerves back to a healthy uh, point. Well, the study is still awaiting peer review and publication. The shingles vaccine is more than 90% effective, but only for a quarter of eligible adults who get it. President Biden traveled to New Hampshire, touting his administration's efforts to lower prescription drug costs. The president highlighted a new Department of Health and Human Services report that found nearly 1.5 billion Medicare enrollees 
saved nearly a billion dollars on prescription drugs in the first half of 2024. Over the summer, the Biden administration announced Medicare has negotiated new lower prices for some expensive prescription drugs through the Inflation Reduction Act. I'm a capitalist. <laughs> and without competition, it's not capitalism, it's exploitation. When big pharma doesn't play by the rules, competitors can't offer lower priced drugs and devices to carry those drugs. So prices stay artificially high. And look, but we're taking action. Now, two weeks before Election Day, the president making the case that Republicans are threatening to undo those changes. Before leaving New Hampshire, he made a campaign stop for Vice President Kamala Harris. When we come back on News 3 Now at 10, Jacob breaks down the fall-like temperatures making their way back into the forecast. Plus, authorities investigate after a mass shooting in the Pacific Northwest. The teenager arrested in connection to that incident. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Eric Hovde has a problem, a problem with the truth. Time and again, his ads have been called false. He's a desperate candidate willing to say anything. But here's what's true. Eric Hovde has a plan to slash Social Security 28%, Medicare 25%, veterans benefits 40%, all to spend $4 trillion on tax breaks for rich guys like himself. Eric Hovde's lying, and he's not for us. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Winning at Ho-Chunk Gaming just got bigger, like mega bigger. When you win a hand-paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, you're automatically entered into our mega jackpot winners quarterly drawings with a grand prize drawing on October 26 to win a new Dodge Ram 2500 Laramie and a chance for $100,000 in cash. Jackpot weekly drawings are going on now. Mondays, 10 winners, $500 in rewards play. Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Shop the largest selection of Chevy trucks and SUVs in Wisconsin at Bergstrom Chevrolet. Lease a new Silverado 1500 starting at $355 a month or a 24 Equinox EV starting at $299 a month. Stop in or shop and purchase at BergstromMadison.com. With Sweeto Metal Roofing, you get quality metal roofs installed by the best in the business. A metal roof means no fading, no storm repairs, true sustainability, and lower energy bills. Sweeto Metal Roofing, the last roof you'll ever need. Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes, while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will do Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums, and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Imagine trying to take on one of the big car companies. It's not easy. Yet this year, one local law firm finalized the largest compensatory verdict in state history against an automaker, over $38 million. And it was no fluke. That same firm has been holding big car companies accountable for faulty designs that cause injury for over 50 years. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Thursday at 10, crime is a hot button issue for voters and the candidate. I'm taking a deep dive into the state of criminal justice here in Wisconsin and the impact it could have on you and your wallet. Three for the people, Thursday on News 3 Now at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. And there are more questions than answers following a mass shooting in Fall City, Washington. A 15-year-old was arrested after five people, including three minors, were found dead in a home. Mary Bell Gonzalez has the latest on the investigation. Very, very sad, very disturbed. 911 calls led authorities in Fall City, Washington to a grisly discovery at a home on Monday. When deputies entered the residence and property itself, uh, they discovered five deceased individuals inside the home. These included two uh, adults 
and three juveniles. Mike Mellis, a deputy for the Kings County Sheriff's Office, says another teen was taken to the hospital. A 15-year-old was arrested at the scene. But it does appear to be that this is a family incident, uh, clearly a domestic violence incident that involves not only uh, a young man who's now in significant uh, trouble, and it, uh, it involves firearms. Mellis says at the time of the arrest, there was no significant confrontation with the teen suspect. Charges, if any, are pending. Tuesday, the minor waived his appearance in court, and a judge granted a motion to withhold his name from the media. His attorney is saying that their client is a, quote, 15-year-old boy who enjoys mountain biking and fishing and has no criminal history. The police haven't come out to this address really for any significant reason for years. The motive behind the deaths remains a mystery. And hopefully we'll come to some kind of a conclusion as to why this happened. I'm Mary Bell Gonzalez reporting. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Israel, his 11th visit since the October 7th attacks a year ago. This latest trip to the region is another push to reach an elusive ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. The Biden administration sees a new opportunity for peace after Israel killed the Hamas leader blamed for engineering the terror attacks. But with the U.S. presidential election just two weeks away, both sides in this war appear staunchly unwilling to compromise. For many, many, many months now, Mr. Sinwar had been uh, the major obstacle to uh, getting to a yes. Of course, um, uh, time has passed uh, uh, since then, and there need to be continuing conversations. Beyond Gaza, senior State Department official said Secretary Blinken is also stressing the need for a diplomatic solution to the Israel-Hezbollah conflict. Recent Israeli strikes in Beirut's southern suburbs hit a building opposite the capital's main government hospital killing at least 13 people, including a child wounding 57. That's according to Lebanon's health ministry. Several former GOP officials and government attorneys are urging the Department of Justice to investigate Elon Musk's $1 million sweepstakes. The billionaire says voters in battleground states who sign his political action committee's petition are eligible for the daily prize. In a letter to the DOJ, the group of officials warned this new tactic could be illegal. Federal law prohibits anyone from paying people to register to vote. General Motors on track for record earnings in 2024. The automaker reported stronger than expected third quarter earnings with $3.4 billion in profit. Revenue rose more than 10% to nearly $49 billion. That's far more than forecast projected considering the costly UAW union strike last year. And GM has raised its earnings outlook for the rest of the year. Target slashing prices on thousands of items ahead of the holiday shopping season. The retailer will cut prices on more than 2,000 home goods, beauty products, Products, toys, food and beverage items. Some prices have already dropped and the discounting will continue through December. This is the second time this year that Target has cut prices in an attempt to lure inflation weary shoppers. In May, the retailer discounted 8,000 items and that helped boost consumer spending after a string of dreadful quarters for the company. The cool weather on the way. Meteorologist Jacob Montesano joins us with our lows and the rain chances for the week. Jacob. Thanks, Eric. Here's a look at the three things you need to know. We are going to see more seasonable temperatures for tomorrow. We also will see a good chance of rain by the time we get to Thursday night with more active weather in the forecast for next week. Now, first, I actually want to start with the wind gusts. Now, it's not going to be breezy for a long period of time, but the winds for later tonight and early tomorrow morning, they're going to be pretty breezy as we'll see wind gusts up to around 25 to 30 miles per hour. But this will mostly be kind of during the morning hours. It's going to improve as we head throughout the day and especially by the evening and sunset. We'll see calmer winds then and then the winds may get a little bit breezy later in the week, but for the most part, it's not going to be quite as bad. Now here's a look at the forecast for tomorrow. We'll see plenty of sunshine, but despite that temperatures will be quite a bit cooler. Highs will be in the middle to upper 50s. Definitely more normal for what we're supposed to see this time of the year, and these temperatures will continue for the most part through the weekend. Now as we take a look at future track as the winds increase, we also will see an increase in cloud cover, but as the winds decrease, the clouds will move out and we'll see sunshine for the afternoon and evening. Clear skies will then continue 
Wednesday night and early Thursday. We'll see some clouds develop later in the day on Thursday, but for the most part, we're going to stay dry until we get to the overnight hours. Now, this is mostly going to happen after sunset Thursday, and it mostly will move out before sunrise Friday. But during those overnight hours, we could see widespread rain and possibly even some pockets of heavy rain. Now, we're not expecting anything severe, but this is really the first time we've kind of forecasted for rain uh, for much of our area in quite some time. So, so move in overnight Thursday very quickly, I should add, because it's going to be uh, dry by the time we get to Friday morning, but we'll definitely take the rain that we can get. And looking at the rainfall forecast, some isolated locations could see up to around a half inch, maybe even a little bit more if we do see some more pockets of heavy rainfall. Now for the next seven days beyond Thursday night, we're not expecting much rainfall, uh, especially by the time we get to the weekend. We'll certainly be dry then, but after Monday, we are expecting more chances of rainfall and that's very evident on the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook where we are expecting above average rainfall, which is certainly some good news. So here's a look at the seven day forecast. The rain chances will start to increase by the time we get to Tuesday evening and overnight Wednesday and unfortunately will uh, right now it looks like it could rain on Halloween, but Tuesday night into Wednesday right now looks like the best chance of rain. Now the reason we're not talking too much in detail about it is a lot can change between now and then, but it also looks like temperatures will increase possibly back up into the 70s and next week is also expected to be pretty windy, especially Tuesday into Wednesday as that as that system moves in. So we're talking about a good amount of rainfall and very strong winds next week, but for the rest of this week, pretty calm other than that rain chance Thursday night. And coming up in sports, bring on the defending champs. So the Badgers say this weekend is a great opportunity to get back on track. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. During COVID, Joan Balwig took half a million dollars in federal loans she never paid back, then voted to block assistance to help other Wisconsin businesses grow. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covdy and I approve this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. How extreme is Todd Novak? He thinks a woman's most private medical decisions should be up to him. Todd Novak has a 100% anti-abortion rating. He supports letting politicians ban abortion with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. And Todd Novak authored the law to ban abortion here in Wisconsin. Elizabeth Grobby will defend abortion rights. She knows private medical decisions are between women and their doctors. Out of money, I know. <laughs> I am not rich as hell. I work hard. I scrape to get by. Donald Trump wants to give tax breaks to billionaires, but Kamala Harris has plans to help us. She's going to crack down on price gouging and cut taxes for working people like me. I voted for Donald Trump before, but this time I'm voting for Kamala. FFPAC is responsible for the content of this ad. Have you heard Eric Hovde? I am totally opposed.
opposed to abortion. I am totally opposed to politicians telling women what we can do. Extremists all over the country have passed abortion bans. Criminal penalties for doctors. No exceptions for rape or incest. Women are dying just trying to get health care. There are even restrictions in Wisconsin. This has to stop. I am totally opposed to abortion. We are totally opposed to Eric Humpty. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. This is China, and this is Wisconsin. Joan Balwig invested thousands of dollars in Chinese companies, but voted against using state funds to help grow companies here in Wisconsin. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. A 1-3 start to the season isn't what the Badger men's hockey team envisioned, but good news, there's plenty of hockey still to be played. The bad news, it doesn't get any easier this weekend. Wisconsin heads to the Mile High City to drop the puck against the reigning national champions, Denver, a team that hasn't lost since March 8th. Now the Badgers, they're looking at this series against the nation's top-ranked team as a great opportunity. We've got an accomplished group that understands what it is to win. We're still trying to find that. And uh, I think a big piece of that formula is making sure you get off to good starts. Uh, because in that building, they can turn one into two into three in a hurry. It's a great opportunity for us to, you know, kind of prove some of those outsiders um, wrong, in a sense. And, um, you know, really just uh, show everyone the confidence we have in, our, in each other. Wisconsin Volleyball's victory over Michigan on Sunday gave Kelly Sheffield win number 305 at UW, tying him with Hall of Fame head coach Pete Waite for the most in program history, meaning one more win, and he stands all alone as Wisconsin's all-time winningest coach. And in true Kelly Sheffield fashion, he made sure to make it clear the wins aren't all him. He has a pretty great coaching staff, too. I've been really fortunate that it's the same crew, uh, the same group, and, uh, uh, and I think it benefits our players in uh, unbelievable ways that there's a predictability, there's a flow, there's a cohesiveness, uh, there's a joy uh, that our staff has with each other, and uh, that's, that's been a major part of this. Before tipping off their season, the Celtics raised banner number 18 to the TD Garden Rafters as the franchise, including former Buck Drew Holiday, celebrated its record-setting NBA championship along with a ring ceremony. Boston would go on to beat New York in their opener. Well, the Bucks open their season tomorrow against the 76ers, and as we said last night, they'll be without Chris Middleton. He was officially listed as out on Milwaukee's injury report today. Doc Rivers did say if it was a playoff game, he'd probably be playing or close to it. Philadelphia will be without Joel Embiid and Paul George. And just a reminder to check out this week's Wisconsin Huddle. Towie Walker and I preview UW's big game against number three Penn State. Show airs at 6.30 on Friday night right here on News 3 Now. We're back after this. When my husband got throat cancer, it wasn't just a health crisis. It was a financial one for my family. And that's something rural families know all too well. Joan Balwig voted against expanding affordable health care for rural families and against bringing drug costs down. And that's one reason I decided to run against her. I'm Sarah Kieski, and I'm running for state senate. Because when someone you love needs medical care, the last thing you should have to worry about is how to pay for it. With high inflation, working families like mine are hurting. And Kamala Harris helped create this mess. Now, while Americans struggle, Kamala spent our tax dollars putting illegal immigrants up in hotel rooms. And she supported spending our tax dollars to give illegals sex changes. It's not just liberal, it's insane. Kamala Harris can never, ever be our president. Preserve America PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. A flood of illegals, skyrocketing prices, global chaos, and Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? 
Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Nothing will change with Kamala. More weakness, more war, more welfare for illegals, and even more taxes. Only President Trump cut middle class taxes, and only President Trump will do it again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. These Baldwin ads are nasty. I can't stand them. She never tells the truth. Now she says Eric Hovde wants to raise the retirement age. That's malarkey. I saw in the news Social Security will be going bankrupt in eight years. Are you kidding? We need Social Security. You're surprised? Washington spends money like crazy. And Baldwin supports all of it. I'm Eric Hovde, and I approve this message. You better get a job. You get a job. Quartz takes a different approach to health insurance. We know every life well lived is a journey. And we're here to light the way at every step. That's why for 40 years, we've been alongside the doctors and hospitals who know what their communities need. Because they're a part of them. Because we're a part of them. There's a fire burning in all of us. Let's ignite it together. Quartz, find your spark. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. Closed captioning sponsored by Community Shares of Wisconsin's Workplace Giving Campaign. How do you appeal to the people of Pennsylvania? I don't give anybody any advice, uh, except on fashion. Colbert's new with Senator John Fetterman, tonight on CBS. Jacob's back. Final check of the forecast. Yeah, it's going to be more fall-like the next couple of days. We'll have highs in the upper 50s, lower 60s from Wednesday through Sunday. We do have a chance of rain Thursday night, but beyond that, we'll be dry until next week. Next week does look to be more active. Uh, we do have several chances of rainfall. Also, will be pretty windy as those temperatures increase. Might even see some rain on Halloween, so we'll continue to update the forecast for next week. But if you like the fall temperatures, the rest of this week looking pretty good for you. Uh, those colors are really getting yeah. vibrant out there as well. Jacob, thank you. Thanks for joining us, folks, for News for Now at 10. Have a great night.